love you. I love you. 801-8255. Um, Deborah, Deborah's in the Bronx. Uh, now I had a plan that, you know, didn't work out for me today, Dr. Black. I should have mm. laid in my vision, which is what we're doing. So I'm going to lean into the vision today. We're going to go with what the vision is saying. Deborah in the Bronx. No Deion Sanders for me. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Karen. Hi. Um, I've called before, and, I, and I, I never tire of saying how wonderful you are and your show is and all your guests are. And, but not for you guys. Where would we be? It's, it's just amazing. So thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, I've been a musician all my life. Um, I'm on a lot of albums. I've done a lot of stuff, good stuff. And I also taught, and I'm retired now. And I promised myself when I retired, I was going to get into this other gift that the Lord gave me, uh, which is writing. Um and I, I used to tell a lot of stories to my kids and, and my students in order to teach them music when I was teaching. And I promised myself I'm going to write children's books on that. And I'm stuck. I, I'm so hung up on, you know, what, what if I don't get published? What if, you know, you know what's the use? And now uh, AI is out here. And I... <laughs> it's like. How do I shut my mind off and just get into this gift that um, I, I just I just want to have fun with and really connect with the world with? Listen, here's what I would tell you: Don't ever shut your mind off. Don't ever shut your mind off. Now you might need to shut your ego off. Oof! Don't shut your mind off. And here's why. Because what the ego does is it tries to determine what will be the outcome of the seed before you plant it. So that a person, hey, so that a person can try to decide was the planting worth it. But see, you cannot do that. Because when you do that, you're trying to run the business of the cosmos. You can't tell the seed, you can't tell the sun, you can't tell the, the rain, you can't tell the earth's germination what to do. Your job is to give it the seed. And what I'm saying to you, sister, it sounds like you've got a great idea. Maybe you have a great story to write. Write it. Write it. Have the faith in your heart and in your spirit that once it gets written, it will do its work. Mm -hmm. The worst thing a, a farmer can do is plant seeds, then sit up all night wondering whether or not there will be a harvest. Mm. You can't do the earth's job. In fact, can I say this? The earth is more reliable than you. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. On that so note. If you got a if you got a book to write, sister, write it and it will do its own job. You better say it. Uh I was gonna go into this <laughs> conversation talking about CBS Sunday morning which is my ritual, you know, I'm gonna have me a little breakfast mm -hmm. and, and sit down and watch Jane Pauley. Yes. CBS Sunday morning, whoever's sitting there in her seat. And there were a few things. First of all, they had a whole thing. Anderson Cooper, uh, the Vanderbilt uh, has a book out about the Astors. And I'm always twisting my face up now at any historical book written by somebody that A, is not a historian or even, uh, anyway, broadly learned. So, um, but in this, in this instance, I was cussing at the TV without curse words, without, um, I was literally, you know, putting a, a positive curse out. I don't know if yes. that's possible, but anyway, yeah, so yeah, we're talking about John, uh, John Astor, uh, who's German, changed his name uh, to, to anglicize it, but he came to this country, he was on a ship, and he overheard people talking about these beavers uh, in London and how prevalent, you know, like you can go to America and make a lot of money because they got a lot of beavers, they're prolific, you, you know, they're, they're po overpopulated, we can bring them to London where everybody wants a beaver hat and a beaver coat because it's waterproof, and it became this, the fashion of the 1800s, you know, beaver 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 so he came to america he was bringing an instrument he wanted to be a musician and, and start a band or whatever and then he ended up in the beaver trade and he was such a despicable human being uh astor was and and by the way there's still 
places in New York that have Aster on Aster Place. You know, it's right, it's right. indelibly etched into America, uh, to New York City's culture and history. Uh, but as they were telling the story, I was like, they need to tell a story about the beavers and how they decimated. The, we talk about the, the, the smallpox and we talk about the Trail of Tears, but we don't talk about the beavers that decimated millions of uh, ind- indigenous people because the beavers created the dams in such a way that it fed the people along the water. It right. fed the people right. along the water and they followed the beaver because that's how you know and i think about you know the the ignorance of the colonizers who came here and planted rows of tobacco mm-hmm. until the dirt the, the rich soil turned to sand because they didn't understand that nature is a circle that's and you right. got to circulate you got to right. circle the, the the crops so that the earth right. can replenish itself with different crops you that's know right. not just the same crop cotton or tobacco they're so stupid and they did this this man owned the land he was the biggest land owner as if you can own the land as another thing indigenous people weren't about putting up markers but he owned the land and then he would rent out his his land he was a slum lord he was like a horrible person and i think about so i'm sitting there yelling at the tv what about the indigenous people what about the decimation of the and then the very next um thing that they did they came back from commercial after telling this story about aster and how he you know did it and then he did this whole piece on the beavers and I said, you know what? That's why I F's with y'all, CBS Sunday morning. They came back with the genocide yeah. of the indigenous. They came back talking about the water and how yeah. the beavers helped regulate the water. So now we got these droughts in California and Arizona because they they decimated the beavers. And then they tried to replant the beavers after they realized the error. But you know, nature was minding this business, doing what God put it here to do. And yeah. then people come, oh, we can make millions of dollars. Like, you needed more land and money. Right. You didn't need all that money. So so I was sitting there, and I was thinking about how, you know, perspective, right? Um, and what we were doing today. And the what we do today impacts life for you and your family 10, 20 years from now, right? So Aster didn't see, he couldn't see, he didn't have vision enough to see by killing all of these beavers and then creating this wealth that he was destroying the planet. He was destroying whole groups of people. He didn't care either. For hundreds of years, we're now in a climate situation based on something people did hundred years ago yeah. without, without yeah. understanding the interconnectivity yeah. of human beings. Uh, and I and I bring this up because I want to encourage everybody. The things you do today will impact your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, far beyond like what you do with your money, what you do with your health. It's it's not you. You don't get unhealthy in one day. You know the right. diabetes happens from a twenty year habit right. of, of what right. you did and what you, you know. So we have to be mindful that the things that come out of our mouths, the things that we do, it's not just about right now. You're not. This is not a right now situation. It's a twenty fifty. 100 year from now thing, what we do today. So and what is, do you want to have? This is the ruin of a material culture, Karen. Because what a material culture does is it ruins people's notion of the impact of time. See, in a material, in a material, in a culture of materiality, we never understand the impact of time because we, and because we always replace things. If you had to keep the same shirt or the same shoes for 10 years and wear them constantly, you would understand the impact of time over time. If you had to can vegetables, you would understand the precious nature of what it means to plant and harvest. But since you can just run in the store and get more and more and more, the store seems to never run out. Kroger's just seems to just never run out, right? The problem there is people have no notion of the relationship with time. And one's relationship with time is supposed to teach you to conserve and to preserve because over time you will run out. But what we're really seeing now is, first of all, Kroger don't grow no food. Kroger always has it, but Kroger Publix does not grow food, people. The earth grows food. But when you wear it out, you did not conserve it. And so what's going to happen over time? It's the same thing you say with the beavers. What's going to happen over time is folks are going to look up and say, what happened? And what happened is you stepped out of relationship with time. Time would have taught you the beauty of conserving and preserving and how to restore that which you have drained. We never think about it because we all we got to do is replace. And we do this with the human heart, too, but that's another time. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I run my fingers through it. 
she smiles and says that she loves me Isn't it lovely when the one who loves thing is the one